I'm Joel Saxon, filling in Alan Hall's shoes as your host for this innovation-focused guest episode of the Uptime Wind Energy Podcast. Today, we're talking about wind turbines uh, and massively important connections uh, in the, between the towers and transition pieces. Bolted L-flange have been used for decades to connect steel cylindrical structures. We know this. However, as the wind industry continues to push structural engineering limits with increased capacity for these behemoth wind turbines, specifically offshore, a need for new tech to solve the loading problems has emerged. Uh, enter stage right, the C1 wedge connection. So uh, with over seven years of development and two years in the field, Jasper Winks and team have developed the next generation of steel structure connections. Uh, Jasper, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Great, great, great. So we, you and I talked a little bit off air about kind of the technology, where it's been, where it's coming, where it's going, but it's driven by offshore industry trends, right? We've all seen, you know, if you look in the North Sea, you see small turbine, small turbine, big, 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 bigger. All of a sudden now we're 15 megawatts and some people around the world are talking about what could be the next generation. Uh, what are those trends that are driving your technology? Yes, indeed. So uh, as you mentioned, we've seen a massive growth in turbine size over the years. And uh, on one hand, that's of course the growth of the rotor. And they always say the rotor is the motor. So you need large rotors to extract energy from the wind. But of course, large rotors also require tall towers. So we see that there's an exponential increase in uh, overturning moments over the past uh, uh, years, um, whereby essentially the bolted elf flange has now reached the point where it is already struggling uh, to deal with the loads. Uh, and soon we'll no longer be able to take the loads. And of course, where that point lies is really uh, project specific, uh, but it's an issue that has been flagged by many industry experts for years already. That elf flange has been used since we started putting steel together hundreds of years ago, you know? So, uh, in, but in a turbine, you see the elf flange in between every tower section, in, even up in the tower some places, right? On uh, the cell on blades, whatever. But what we're focused on is tower connections and even the transition piece and some of that monopile interface. So where, and what are the issues that these, the, the t traditional L flange technology, I mean, you explained it to me, maybe you can explain it here to our listeners. Yeah, so um, indeed we see that um, the heavy loaded connections and of course the more down the substructure the heavier loaded uh, the connection is because you've got a longer lever arm to where the rotor is pushing on uh, the structure itself. Um, you see there are overturning moments which are already approaching uh, one giga newton meter uh, for people to put it in perspective. That's a 50 kilometer long stick and then you lift a Tesla at the very end. So it's, it's massive loads that need to be transferred through these interfaces. Um, and the problems that companies are having is, first of all, there's a limited number of bolts that you can put on a certain circumference. So for a bolted elf flange to scale up further, at a certain moment, you cannot fit any more bolts on the circumference. So then the next logical step would be to grow in bolt size. But for a long time, the M72, so a metric dimension uh, stud size, um, it was the largest stud in the industry, but we now see a massive base where some companies are considering M80 and even M90. And that basically brings you into a field where on one hand also your flanges are growing massively in size, uh, but also the tools that you need to handle. We're talking about tools that can easily weigh 70, 80 or maybe even more kilos. Um, so there's a real challenge in getting those uh, connections made. And then on top of that, everything, of course, needs to be done under time pressure because there's this expensive installation vessel that needs to wait for either the transition piece or the tower to be connected to the foundation. Um, and we want to solve that issue. Yeah. So, I mean, the the other, you you go bigger in bolt size or you need more bolts. So then all of a sudden your tower would just start increasing in diameter to a point where it doesn't, it, the cost efficiency isn't there anymore in the tower. Yeah, so at a certain moment, you would have to increase your base diameter, but of course, a larger base is exactly in the splash zone, uh, attracts more wave loading, which results in more fatigue damage in your foundation. So the optimum is basically uh, not having to increase your interface diameter that much, uh, but still being able to connect it properly. Um, and our connection technology allows that because you have a higher ultimate capacity, a much higher fatigue capacity, and we can enable both safer and faster installation. Okay, so let's dive into the technology itself. Now, I've looked uh, online and I've checked out some of your white papers and this stuff, and it and it looks to me, you guys have done a great job of marketing the thing because from someone who is not a structural engineer, I can look at it and go, okay, that makes sense. 
Um, but maybe you can explain in better words than that. Let's let's kick off with the reference. The reference is the uh, the L flange, which is essentially uh, two flange bodies which are connected to uh, tower and foundation. So let's focus on that interface for now. Um, they're welded at the factories and offshore they need to be connected. So it's basically uh, a flange that's protruding inwards into the tower and they are sticking studs in. But it also means that the stud or the bolt is not in the line of the where the load is transferred. So it's an eccentric connection by default. What we have is we also have a flange connection. Uh, however, the flanges are different. We have a fork shaped upper flange and a shaft shaped lower flange, which are welded to both the tower and the foundation and they slide into each other. And then we have a fastener that is radially inserted from the inside of the tower in that uh, fork shaft combination and thereby pulls the shaft on top of the fork. And it's essentially a preloaded connection with the main difference being that it's not eccentric. So we have a centric connection. So it's directly in line with the load transfer path. But we are generating a very high preload with a stud which is basically perpendicular to the load introduction. And we are, and we are um, increasing the load by the means of wedges. So we're pulling two wedges together that essentially force two bodies apart. And that way uh, people can uh, see it, of course, online, um, how that generates a symmetric preloaded connection. Okay, so the, I think the one of the most important things here when I look at this is, okay, from a traditional flange connection, I mean, it's literally like uh, on my desk here, I have two coffee cups. It's like setting two coffee cups on top of each other. And then the crane has to hold the top piece and you kind of got to figure out how to get the studs or the bolts in and make it all line up or maybe put some pins in or something. So you have this, this moment or this time during construction or during connection that is, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's a highly critical moment. All hands on deck. Make sure this thing goes perfectly right because you're not only um, trying to put load down, but you're trying to align it to get into the holes correctly. But your technology and like the way you weld the flange on, the way the flanges are designed, you remove that critical moment uh, where once it sets, it's it's in place. Yes, indeed. Um, so. Indeed, current installation of L flanges uh, has this time critical, um, uh, also safety critical moment where you're trying to land two flanges and with some kind of uh, pins, they try to line up the holes. Um, we've taken that in, um, into consideration when we designed our connection. So essentially when uh, the upper flange, which is then part of the tower, is lowered onto the foundation, there are several um, guides and bumpers that align the tower directly in the right orientation such that the moment that the flanges connect, we have a quick connection system that directly connects the tower to the foundation. And once that connection has been made, the um, crane can directly disconnect the tower from the, um, like, yeah, the, the tower can be directly released and you can start lifting, for example, your nacelle. So you can save significant amount of time. Uh, you know, the safety part of this is a big thing. Uh, talking to many people in the industry and you watch, you see these photos and stuff of like a couple of technicians up inside of a tower section and the cranes coming down with a piece and they're trying to line things up. It just seems like we should be more advanced than that as, a, as an industry. Um, and I take from my subsea uh, oil and gas background, right? So subsea oil and gas, almost every single thing that gets connected in the subsea world is connected in the manner that you guys are proposing and when what your technology is. There's guide, There's guide. Uh, basically, a lot of times it's as simple as a piece of angle iron. That's a guide that brings things on. But there's a lot of um, cone, like convex, concave. They all go, they fit together because you don't have the capability of having people down there or other, or other methods of support. You just have to make sure that when you land the top side or the top piece into the bottom piece, it has to align physically correctly, and it has to mate and make a good connection. So that idea is what you, I mean, it's not what you're based on. I'm just trying to put two and two together here. That same concept is exactly what you guys are doing, but you're increasing speed, so efficiency and in installation. You're decreasing the HSE risk by having this thing basically locked down when it gets there. Uh, and I and putting less people at risk, I think, is the big thing. Yeah, it's indeed a, it's a, it's a big thing, which is part of our design by default. Um, everyone, of course, says that uh, yeah, safety is important, but very few people in the end are willing to pay for it. Um, but I think the benefit of our connection is that on one hand, it's also a lot lighter than a traditional L flange. 
So we're typically 50% lighter. And it also allows for significant uh, savings on uh, both the tower as well as the foundation. So in the, um, yeah, basically the total investment is expected to be significantly lower. And then if that would also enable much safer installation, it should be a no-brainer. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So one of the things that you had mentioned to me kind of off air was that when you set that first story, when you set the top piece on, because of the way the connection is, you're, you have like a quick connect method where it's like four bolts and you're moving on to the next piece? Indeed. So it's an, an X number of, um, of blocks that we uh, insert into the, um, into the flanges that essentially prevent the flanges from, uh, from separating again. It's a little bit like a remotely operated shackle, uh, as you probably know from oil and gas. All right, so, so let's get into some of the benefits of the technology itself. Um, first one being reduction of LCOE, and you kind of touched on that a little bit, but it goes a little bit deeper than just the installation phase. Yeah, so there's uh, several savings possible. The first one, of course, if you look at um, uh, design, um, in MPTP design, we expect significant savings can be made. We're also working on a large uh, joint industry project uh, that allow a lot of uh, developers um, you know, to basically learn about those potential savings. Uh, another um, uh, point where significant money can be saved is in the maintenance. Um, because our connection is less sensitive to a preload loss, um, we basically enable uh, in the future uh, for the connection to be fully maintenance free. And that I think is the holy grail of, of connections. So designing something that is very robust um, and also enables a maintenance-free installation. Yeah, because right now you guys, this, this C1 wedge connection is DNV certified, right? But as it sits right now, you guys are still doing, because it's, it's a new technology, right? It's been in the field for two years. It doesn't have the L flange 60 year history as we know, um, but you, DNV has stated in this certifying right now that you still are visiting it every so often to make sure that all the connections are in place? Yeah, so DNV um, takes a precautious stand, which is good because in the end, um, people yeah, rely on their expertise, um, which basically indicates that initially you want to do some um, uh, basically inspections that indeed the connection behaves as it should. Um, but they also understand and they also uh, 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 approve that in the long term, if indeed um, the connection behaves as we all expect, that it can be maintenance free. Yes. Yeah, that's fantastic because I mean, classically, I mean, it's it's difficult enough onshore to go and do your torque and tensioning, you know, ten percent or you know, marking like going every turbine, going to every flange, and checking every bolt to make sure everything is good. That's difficult enough onshore. Now go offshore. And you have to get all that tooling, all those people from a C, you know, from a CTV up onto the transition piece, up onto the tower. That's a difficult and very expensive project offshore. So if in the future that part of O and M maintenance can be eliminated, man, that's huge. There's uh, there's definitely a large potential savings to be made there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So then we'll get a little bit deeper into the the technology part of this thing and the the engineering, the structural engineering part of it. So higher ultimate capacity and high fatigue capacity. Um, can you walk us through those concepts with the project? Yeah, so uh, typically our connections are uh, ULS based, meaning that if we have a load set for a specific turbine, um, what is most governing for our design are the extreme loads. So when we know those extreme loads, we know the dimensions of the connection. We have built a tool that also takes all kinds of imperfections to account um, and we can make a design in a matter of seconds. And what we typically see that because our design is ULS governed, um, that, very, uh, that very same design um, then basically only needs to go through uh, all the fatigue checks. And we typically see that fatigue is not governing the design, which is unlike a bolted l flange connection where it's continuously a battle between ultimate and fatigue capacity. And now and then companies even uh, need to take shortcuts whereby they have to go towards milling flanges in order for um, yeah, the connection to survive uh, the fatigue life. To me, it just makes sense. I think that uh, the future of the wind industry needs uh, innovation like this, right? There's There hasn't been very many step changes in innovation offshore in, in from, from what I've seen now. Of course, I'm, I don't see every corner of the market or everything everybody's doing, but every turbine, say even the, the ones that are being installed in the United States right now and the ones that are being installed in Taiwan, the ones in the North Sea, 
everything kind of looks the same. The vessels are kind of the same, but this is something different. So uh, I'm going to rewind a little bit and ask you, how, how did you come up with this problem statement? Why did this project start? What, what, where did C1 Wedge Connection come from? Yeah, so um, I was visiting um, uh, conferences which were about foundations. And at those conferences, there was continuously a discussion about the issues around the bolted elf flange. Um, so that sort of um, planted a seed towards potential improvements and in the end led to, uh, to this connection being developed. We've worked very close uh, together with uh, one of the largest uh, offshore OEMs. Um, we also have a very close collaboration with uh, Delft University here in the Netherlands. Um, and I have a, a great team working with me uh, on, this, uh, on this solution. So over the years, we've spent tens of thousands of hours engineering and testing uh, this solution. And it is very convincing, and we also get that as feedback from the market. But of course, there's a large investment which is placed and relies on the structural integrity of this connection. So we are basically being um, scrutinized to an extreme detail. Uh, you could even say the, the level of scrutiny is significantly higher than what is uh, what would have been applied for an elf flange because that was already the state of the art. But it's okay. I fully understand it. And so far, we're only getting uh, very positive reactions. Oh, fantastic. So what, and what we've seen is seven years of development, two years in the field. Um, so what does the future look like for the C1 Wedge connection? Yeah, so um, we have several projects upcoming. Um, uh, that will also be announced in the media once we are allowed to, uh, to say something about it. Uh, but it's quite clear that uh, larger turbines uh, require heavy capacity connections, high capacity connections, um, and that's exactly what we can deliver. And for us, it's a matter of convincing uh, all those uh, developers that have joined our joint industry project uh, of the structural integrity by actually delivering a full-scale connection, showing how fast we can make that connection, how easy it is. Um, and also, of course, show the cost savings that can be obtained by using this kind of connection. And all that will basically um, yeah, pave the route uh, for implementation. I love it. So we're talking um, cheaper, which is always good. <laughs> um, high capacity, faster installations, safer installations, um, and less O&M spend in the future. Um, I mean, to me, that sounds like a home run for an innovation for offshore wind. Uh, so Jasper, if someone wants to get a hold of you guys in the uh, C1 Connections team, how do they do it? Uh, you can go to our website, so it's c1connections.com, um, and you can contact us through the website. Uh, also, if there are any developers interested in the joint industry project, uh, we'd be happy, happy to uh, inform you. Um, yeah, and in general, um, the technology directly allows these kind of savings, but also for certain uh, onshore projects. If you, for example, have... Uh, uh, locations where you have limitations in terms of tower diameter, um, this connection allows you to basically hold on to that slender tower that still passes under the bridges um, and doesn't require a T-flange at a height of 20, 30 meters up in the air. So it's both offshore and onshore that we're focusing on. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, in, in the onshore world, uh, uh, some of these wind farms that are like, we talk about the Sun Zia wind farm that's going up in the United States right now. It's 3.6 gigawatts. There's going to be hundreds and hundreds of turbines out there. And if you're able to increase the efficiency at which they're put together and decrease O&M costs in the future, I think this technology should be implemented onshore as well. Um, of course, the, the, the biggest pain right now is, uh, is offshore. Um, so that's what we're focusing on. Uh, but we see definitely a lot of traction in the onshore market as well. So yeah, bring it on. Bring it on. I love it. Well, Jasper, thanks for joining me here today on the, the Uptime podcast and uh, best of luck in the future. Thank you very much for having us. 